Today I'm going to show you guys the three steps that you should take if you want to make sure you make the right 808 patterns for your beats. When it comes to creating 808 patterns, following this three step process is going to make things a little bit more simple as well as help you make better 808 patterns overall. Now the first step is identification. Listening to this loop here, I first want to identify where the major music changes are happening. Now there is a lot going on in this loop in terms of how many notes are playing, but what I want to focus on are the larger underlying shifts in the loop. So as the loop is playing, I'm going to place markers down to get a better sense of the framework. And by all means, this isn't something that you have to do, by the way, I just want to show you guys this idea visually. So here I'm able to identify where these shifts are happening. I'm going to play these markers one by one so you guys can get a better understanding and hear it for yourself. You guys can hear each of these markers feels like there's something different happening musically. And using these markers, I can start building out my 808 pattern. It's going to give me a better sense of the overall timing of where my notes should be. But obviously, first things first, I also need to identify the notes that are playing here. Now, if you came up with a melody yourself, you're going to obviously know what the notes are in your loop, namely the root notes. But if you're using a loop like I am here, this is something that I showed you guys in an earlier video. What we're going to do is use Wave Candy to help us identify all the notes in our loop. So what I'm going to do is just go marker by marker here and identify the lower notes, which are the underlying chords. So we'll start off with the first marker here. So the first chord that we have here, I'm going to work bottom up. We have a C sharp. The next note up is another C sharp. After this, we have an E as well as a B. You guys will notice I'm not really interested in all these higher notes up here. I'm just more focused in on the lower notes, which are the chords. The reason why is because these lower notes here are the ones that are actually important. They're the ones that are responsible for the underlying musical shifts that I was talking about earlier. And by the way, I did a full tutorial on how to use Wave Candy in case you're confused about what's happening here. So check that out right above my head after the video is done. So I'm going to move on here and keep transcribing. Let's go to marker two. So it looks like we have a B. So I'll place that down here. Next up, a C sharp. And then the note right above it here is a G sharp. And I'm just going to go marker by marker here and continue to do this. All right, so here are all the notes that I transcribed from Wave Candy. What I'm going to do is play this in a high pitch synth just to make sure I have all the right notes here. So this sounds perfect to me. This is why Wave Candy is just so helpful. It easily let me understand all the notes that are important in my loop. I really recommend watching that video so you can understand how to use it and do this exact same thing. So now that I have a good framework of all the notes that are playing and when they're playing, I'm going to go into my 808 now. I'm going to enable ghost notes here by hitting Alt and V. And now just as a starting point, I'm going to place an 808 at the root note of each and every one of these chords. Now I can already see right off the bat, this area right here is probably not going to sound good. I have the exact same four notes playing back to back. But nonetheless, let's take a listen. All right, so this pattern can use some fixing, which brings us to our second step, which is adjustments. From here, if I feel like one of the 808s here doesn't sound all that good or just sounds boring to me, what I can do is try to use one of the other notes in the chord to see if that sounds a little bit better. Now, most of these notes sounded good to me except for this end part here, so I'm going to try to adjust some of these notes first. So I'm going to move this note up as well as this one. Let's see how this sounds. So this sounds much better to me. I brought a little bit more musicality to my 808 pattern. It doesn't sound as boring now. Another adjustment that you can do to improve your 808 pattern is also adjusting the timing of the notes. So having our 808 hit whenever we have a change in our loops underlying rhythm might not be the most interesting type of pattern. Pushing some of these notes so it has a later or an earlier timing might be more interesting.
But I will say the further that we stray away from those initial anchor points that we put for our 808 pattern, the more likely we're going to risk making a mess of our beat. So you don't want to get too crazy and put your notes all over the place. Now we get to step three, which is addition, adding more notes into our pattern. One important thing to keep in mind whenever you're adding complexity to your pattern is to think about what's happening in the other components of your beat. Right now, all we have is our loop and our 808, but if we had a very complex drum pattern that had a lot of kicks and a lot of snare rolls, it might be a good idea to minimize the amount of complexity in our 808 pattern. Even with this loop, you guys can hear. Comparatively speaking, once you get to this third marker here, we have this whole area here where there's not much going on in terms of our loop. There's not as much going on with that top line melody in this section, so this might be a good idea to add a little bit more complexity to our 808 pattern. In terms of which notes you should add, you can try starting out by using the different notes in your chord and see how that sounds. But by no means do you have to make sure you use the notes from the chord here. You can also use the notes that show up in the other parts of your pattern. So for this area here, I'll start off by putting an A right here. Earlier on in the pattern, it looks like we have a G sharp all the way up here. So I'm going to put a G sharp down here as well. Over here, it looks like we have a B, so a B would work with our pattern here. Let's hear how that sounds. So you guys can see, even though these notes here don't show up in our current chord that we're playing, it still works. So using notes that belong in other chords that happen to play in other sections of your loop will still work. So I'm going to add some more notes now. It looks like this section here is pretty barren, so I'm going to add some more notes here as well. So this is sounding good to me so far. Another common technique when you're coming up with your 808 pattern is to include fills at the end of your loop or at the end of every other bar also. Also using slides is a very common technique as well. So let's take a listen to how this pattern sounds now. So when you're coming up with your 808 pattern, following these three steps will help guide you along and hopefully help result in a better 808 pattern in the end. Eventually through practice, you'll be able to do this by ear, but in the meantime, using Wave Candy can really help you out in identifying all the notes in your loop and using those notes to help create your 808 pattern. So again, watch the video on how to use Wave Candy in the description box below. If you guys have found this video helpful, like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment section below if you use some secret tools for your 808 patterns as well. My drum kit is available in the description box below. As always, there's some 808s in there that you can use for your 808 patterns. Join the discord down below as well if you're interested in having your beats reviewed live and I'll see you guys next time.